Each partner will have a gate that you will touch the ball through. The gates are about a step apart and 10 yards away from your partner's gate. The first touch is across your body with the inside of your feet. Make sure you switch which foot you are touching the ball with so you aren't just touching the ball with your left foot the whole time. The important part here is to pass the ball with pace to the correct foot of your partner so that he can take a good touch through the gate of cones. You always want to keep the ball on the ground and accurately pass the ball to the correct foot of your teammate so that you can keep possession of the ball. Small things like this matter in a game. The next drill also requires a partner and four cones. This drill is set up in the shape of a trapezoid. As you can see, the two yellow cones in front are about a step apart and then the red cones are diagonal from those yellow cones about seven to eight steps away. Here you will start with fast feet through the yellow cones, receive the ball, play a one touch pass back to your partner, back pedal, and receive the ball with your back foot. Take a touch, then pass around the red cone, move to the next red cone, receive the ball, one touch back, and then receive the ball again for another one touch and repeat the drill. For this one, each of us went around five times and that equaled one rep. We did two to three reps going each way. This drill also requires the serving partner to really set the pace. You have to pass to the correct foot, like I said earlier, and move with... Good touch. Yes. 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 Yeah. 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 Yes. The first drill in today's dribbling training session is the cone weave. So this is how I like to set it up. So I place one cone down, take three steps out in front, and then I place six cones all one step apart. So tight gaps in between them to really challenge our tight ball control. And then I take another three steps after those six cones to place my final cone. Then starting at the first cone we place down, we're dribbling out and weaving in and out of those six center cones. So the goal is to try and get touches with all the different surface areas of both feet. So as you can see, going out with the right foot inside and outside, then all the way back to the start. Then each time I reach the start, I'm changing up the exercise. So now I'm going out with my left foot. I'm also going to get some touches with only the inside of my foot and also incorporate some sole rolls as well. So these are just five examples of exercises you can use during the cone weave, but I actually have a whole video dedicated to cone weave exercises containing over 30 in total. I'll put a link to that on the screen right now, but these five exercises allow you to cover all the different surface areas of the foot. So it's basically a dynamic ball mastery. I like to do these at the start of my dribbling training sessions just to gain touches and confidence with all the different surface areas of the foot. A perfect way to warm up before moving into some more dynamic, more advanced dribbling drills. So what I typically do is I dribble there and back for each exercise, complete those five exercises in total, rest for 20 to 30 seconds and then repeat three times. Drill number two is the diagonal dribble. So we place one cone down, turn 45 degrees and take six steps out to place our second cone. Then we turn 45 degrees in the opposite direction and take 12 steps this time to place our third cone. Then we turn 45 degrees one more time in the opposite direction, six more steps to place our final cone. Then starting at the first cone we place down with the ball, we're gonna be dribbling out around each cone diagonally. So trying to keep the ball sharp and tight around those corners. And as you'll notice, I'm trying to take a touch of the ball with every step. I'm not just knocking the ball out in front of me and chasing after it. We're really trying to find a balance of speed, but also close control. So what we do is we nudge the ball with the outside of our foot, really trying to take a soft touch of the ball with every step while traveling with speed. So trying to make the ball look like it's an attachment of our body, almost like there's Velcro or super glue between the ball and our foot. That's gonna be a more effective dribbling style when you're dribbling at speed, but you've got pressure from defenders. It's gonna be a lot more difficult for them to take the ball from you. So as you can see here, I dribble all the way out to the end and back to the start, place my foot on the ball. Then I rest for about 20 to 30 seconds between each repetition. Then I'm going out twice with the right foot and twice with the left foot. If you can get a balance on both feet in terms of your dribbling, you're just gonna be a more effective player, trying to increase the abilities of your non-dominant foot and get it as close to your strong foot as you possibly can. Then once you've done four reps, we can move into drill number three.